Nura, Rise of the Yokai Clan, Demon Capital, begins by showing the past when Nura Rikuo was only five years old. At that time, Rikuo was with his father, Nura Rihan, and a mysterious girl who seemed close to his father. Suddenly, she stabbed his father in the back, killing him while Rikuo could only look at him in shock. Three years after the death of Nura Rihan, who is Nura Clan's second commander, Rikuo's grandfather, Narari Haon, decides to make Rikuo a candidate for the third commander who will take his father's place. However, he rejects the decision because, at school, his schoolmates say that the yokai always do evil. They also often hear the evil deeds that the clan leader named Gagoze does, which is kidnaps and devoting human children. Gagoze thinks he is the strongest in Nura clan because he has killed many humans. He then tells Narari Hyun that he is more suitable as a candidate for the third commander of Nura clan. The following day, Rikua misses the last bus from school and is returned home by Karasu Tengu. Once home, he hears that the bus carrying his classmates has been in an accident. Rikuo transforms into his yokai form for the first time and goes out to rescue them, leading his own night parade of a hundred demons. The accident is revealed to have been caused by the Gagoze clan that feeds on children and whose leader is expected to be named the next heir of the Nura clan. Gagoze apparently intends to kill Rikuo because he thinks that Rikuo is not worthy of being the third commander of the Nura clan, but instead, it was he who got killed by Rikuo. So, after he kills Gagoze and the other yokai, he declares that he will become the third heir of the Nura clan and protect humans. Back to the present, Aotabo and Kurotabo, who were on patrol, were surprised by the appearance of two yokai who claimed to be them to get some benefits. Soon afterward, they immediately chased the two yokai away. Not long after, the imposter yokai accidentally crossed paths with two mysterious young men named Ryuji and Mamiru, who turned out to be Omioji. Knowing that they were Omioji, Aotabo confronted them and engaged in a fierce battle with them. However, they managed to take him down in the end. On the other hand, Rikuo and his classmates decide to search for Yura, who has not been attending school recently. The next day, Rikuo finds Yura training alone in an abandoned building. Yura seems still in shock about what happened before because she couldn't protect her friends from yokai attacks and was instead protected by a mysterious yokai. In the middle of their conversation, Ryuji suddenly appears and immediately knows that Rikuo is a yokai, even though he is in his day form. Ryuji told Yura to stay away from Rikuo and then attacked him. However, she instead tried to protect him from Ryuji's attack because she thought that Rikuo was a human all this time. Ryuji was annoyed that Yura protected the yokai, their enemies. Because of that, he didn't hesitate to attack her until she finally lay helpless. Seeing Yura trying desperately to protect him until she was seriously injured, Rikuo finally showed his yokai form along with the day that had turned into night, and saved her from the fatal attack by Ryuji. The battle between them begins. Ryuji uses his ultimate weapon and challenges Rikuo. If he can survive for three minutes, he wins. Finally, Rikuo manages to survive but is severely injured. Knowing that Rikuo was helpless, Ryuji then launched a fatal attack. Unexpectedly, Rikuo had anticipated the attack and managed to dodge it. In fact, he counterattacked by drawing his sword at Ryuji. Suddenly, Mamiru shows up and attacks Rikuo to protect Ryuji, but his yokai comrades appear to protect their master. Seeing that, Yura thought that Rikuo had killed her brother. Surprisingly, Ryuji gets up, and he isn't wounded. He realizes that Rikuo uses a sword named Nenakiramaru that only cuts a yokai. He knows that he and Mamiru won't be able to defeat Rikuo's yokai comrades, so they decide to leave. But before leaving, Ryuji told the news of their brother's deaths and about Hagoromo Kitsune, who had resurrected. He said that Hagoromo Kitsune and her men had managed to destroy the barrier installed by the ancestors of the Keikain family and ordered Yura to return to Kyoto on the orders of their grandfather, who is the current head of the Keikain family. After the battle, Yura asks Rikuo whether he is human or yokai. He simply replies that he is a human by day and a yokai by night. However, he is still the same Nura Rikuo. So, 400 years ago, the Nura clan started becoming the most feared clan in the land. They are different from the other yokai clans because they do not bother to kill humans. During this era, a beautiful woman named Yohime is said to be God's gift because of her ability to cure any illness and injury. However, Yohime's power is abused by her father, who demands huge amounts of money from the people who want to be cured. Not only that, but her father controls her movements and keeps her isolated at home, unaware of the outside world. As the news of her beauty and special healing powers spreads, she becomes the target of the Kyoto yokai who wants to offer her heart to their leader, Hagoromo Kitsune. Meanwhile, Narari Hyon has also heard about Yohime and becomes interested in her. To protect Yohime, her father hires the only OG from the Keikain family, led by Koremitsu Keikain, who gives her a sword named Nenikiramaru that could slash at any yokai who tries to attack her. One evening, Narari Hyon appears in Yohime's room and declares his interest in her. 
The next day, he appears again in her room, taking her to the Nura clan hideout to introduce her to his comrades. And suddenly, Nurari Hon asks her to be his wife. However, she didn't answer and told him not to visit her again. The following night, Yohime's mansion is attacked by yokai, and all of the Onmyoji looking after her are killed. When Narari Hon arrives there, one of the Onmyoji reveals that Yohime has been captured by Hagoromo Kitsune's clan. After hearing that, he rushes to Osaka Castle to save her. Arrived at that place, Narari Hon and his yokai comrades challenge Hagoromo Kitsune and her clan. Suddenly, a fierce battle ensued between the two yokai clans until he managed to defeat Hagoromo Kitsune with Nenakiramaru's sword and the help of Hidemoto Keikain, the 13th head of the Keikain family, who seals the fox yokai with his Hagun technique. Soon afterward, Narari Hyon becomes the Lord of Pandemonium, and his clan is acknowledged as the most powerful yokai clan of all. At the same time, Yohime realizes she is in love with him and decides to stay by his side as his wife. Back to the present, Rikuo, who remembers a little about Hagoromo Kitsune and painful memories of the death of his beloved father, decides to go to Kyoto and save Yura. Hearing Rikuo's wish, his grandfather strictly forbids it because, with his current strength, he will not be able to face Hagoromo Kitsune and her henchmen. As Rikuo insists, Norari Hon has no choice but to send his grandson to Tono Village to train him and improve his skills as his current abilities are lacking to defeat Hagoromo Kitsune. At first, Rikuo tried to escape from Tono Village because he was instead told to do household chores such as washing clothes and chopping firewood. However, he was completely unable to escape from the village. Not only that, in Tono Village, he also doesn't change into his human form, even during the day. Rikuo meets Idaku, a male yokai who tells him that Tono Village is a hidden village also called the Sacred Grounds of Ayokashi or Yokai. It is so full of smoke that the only places reached by sunlight are those full of spirit energy. The entire village can be considered a yokai, as those unable to sever the fear surrounding it will never be able to leave. Rikuo also wondered about the fear. He then met Idaku, who was a yokai assigned to train him while he was in Tono Village. After practicing for a while, Rikuo seems to have mastered the fear of Narari Hon's trademark to hide his existence, like the one he used to defeat Tamazuki. But the technique turned out to be easily broken by Idaku, who can form his fear into a weapon that can destroy the fear of his opponent. Not only Idaku but Rikuo also met several yokai from Tono Village, one of them was Amezo, who was a Kappa, one of yokai, Rera, who was a Yukiona, and also Yukari, who was a Zashikiwarashi. In addition, there is also Dohiko the Hudachi in Awashima, a yokai male during the day and female during the night. Awashima hates being looked down on or underestimated because of his female form, as he considers himself male. In the following days, Rikuo's training continues. At the same time, a deputation of Kyoto yokai named Kidomaru came to Tono village to ask Akagapa, the village leader, to help Hagoromo Kitsune fulfill her goal. However, he refuses to help them. On the other hand, the Kyoto yokai are preparing to leave the village when they spot Rikuo and attempt to kill him. During the fight, Rikuo understands the real power of Narari Hon's fear and manages to cut the fear of his enemy. Kidomaru and his henchmen retreat, saying they will defeat him with his clan and all Omioji from the Keikain family. Meanwhile, Hagoromo Kitsune, currently using the human form of a young black-haired girl with very pale skin, is seen getting ready to destroy the fifth protective seal in Seiji Temple along with her men. One of her yokai comrades, a male yokai named Ibaraki Doji, suggested that they destroy the protective seals at once, as it would be a waste of time to destroy them one by one. The other yokai seemed to agree with Ibaraki Doji's suggestion, as they couldn't wait to see the destruction of Kyoto and humanity after 400 years of waiting. However, Hagoromo Kitsune's advisor, Minagoro Shijizo, said that they could not destroy the seal at once because it was created by Hidemoto Keikain, the 13th head of the Keikain family who sealed her 400 years ago. Hidemoto is the most talented Omioji in the history of the Keikain family and possesses abilities that cannot be underestimated. The fox yokai firmly believed that they were able to destroy all the seals, and after that, they would set up a base at Nijo Palace. At the same time, Ryuji, who knows that Hagoromo Kitsune and her henchmen have managed to break the seal and spread terror in Kyoto, orders Yura to finish training before the fox yokai destroys all the seals and takes control of Kyoto City. Elsewhere, the head of the Keikain family is meeting with the higher-ups of Keikain House to discuss the movement of Hagoromo Kitsune and her henchmen. They managed to destroy six seals in 13 days. Pato and Masatsugu Keikain, talented Omioji assigned to protect the seal, suggest they face Hagoromo Kitsune head-on. However, the higher-ups rejected the suggestion because they didn't want to lose more candidates to lead the Keikain House. One of the most talented Omioji in Keikain House, Akifusa, 
then says that he has a plan to defeat Hagoro Mokitsune and rushes off to Rokukinji with Pato and Masatsugu. Long story short, Akifusa succeeded in confining Hagoro Mokitsune inside the barrier he had created and separated her from her comrades. After that, Pato attacked her with his strongest Shikigami but was easily blocked by her. Not long after, Gasha Dokuro, a giant skeleton yokai who was a subordinate of Hagoro Mokitsune, managed to destroy the barrier so that the yokai managed to break in and launch attacks on the Omioji. At the same time, Rikuo, still training with Idaku in Tono Village, hears about many skilled Omioji being hunted down one by one by Hagoro Mokitsune and her yokai comrades. He decides to return home to gather his night parade of demons before heading to Kyoto. His friends among the Tono yokai decide to accompany him. Arriving home, Rikuo then asked his night parade of demons to get ready because they were going to Kyoto soon. Narari Hyun, knowing that his grandson had made up his mind to go to Kyoto, then summoned Takarabune, a giant yokai in the form of a flying ship that would take Rikuo and his comrades to Kyoto. Meanwhile, in Kyoto, Kana and her classmates, who are members of the Kiyajuji Paranormal Club, go on a yokai search expedition at a temple at night. Due to the influence of Hagoro Mokitsune, the yokai around them did not hesitate to appear, even attacking Kana and her classmates. Luckily, Yura arrived on time and immediately helped Kana. At the same time, a Yukiona named Surara and Aotabo also arrived to protect them on Rikuo's orders. Realizing that the situation in Kyoto is getting more dangerous with the appearance of the yokai who openly attack humans, Yura brings her classmates to the main house of the Keikain family and tells them about the dire situation that is currently happening in Kyoto. Yura then asked her classmates to stay at home for their safety, and Surara and Aotabo were assigned to protect them. Shortly afterward, Yura rushed to the Sokokuji Temple, the second seal's location, because Hagoro Mokitsune and her comrades were expected to destroy the seal that very night. Arriving there, the Omioji had activated the barrier to protect the seal. At first, the Kyoto yokai struggled to break the barrier. But then, there appeared someone who could destroy the Omioji's barrier with a single slash of his spirit sword. And that person was none other than Akifusa, who was under the influence of the yokai. Akifusa, who harbors jealousy towards Yura because she is the heir of the Keikain family, has been possessed by Minagoro Shijizo to attack the Omioji, who are his comrades. Seeing the Omioji starting to get pressed by the attacks from Akifusa and the yokai, Yura immediately intervened and mobilized her four strongest Shikigami to face the Kyoto yokai. However, that caused Yura to be caught off guard, so she couldn't predict Akifusa's attack. At the same time, Ryuji arrived just in time and managed to stop the attack. He then orders her to meet Mamiru and find the mastermind behind all this while he fights against Akifusa. Long story short, Ryuji finally managed to defeat Akifusa. Suddenly, Hagoro Mokitsune and her night parade of demons appeared and managed to take Ryuji down. Not long after, Yura finally arrived with Mamiru and then used Hagun's Shikigami technique, the high-level technique Hidemoto Kekain had used to seal her 400 years ago. Turned out that only a talented Omioji can use the technique, and anyone who manages to use it is entitled to become the head of the Keikain family. Hagun is a technique that summons the Keikain house's previous ancestors as a massive Shikigami. Although the technique is considered a Shikigami, it cannot attack independently. But with the direction of the 13th head of the Keikain family, Hidemoto Keikain, Yura finally manages to purge the possessed Akifusa. He appears before Yura and Hagoro Mokitsune, who immediately recognize her as his old enemy. Generally, in the Hagun technique, the ancestors appear as skeletons in priest robes, but the 13th head, Hidemoto, appears, attributing to his immense spiritual power. Knowing that the Omioji would not be able to defeat Hagoro Mokitsune and her comrades, Hidemoto then asked Yura and the Omioji to retreat and devise a new strategy. Meanwhile, there was a conflict between Kubinashi and Idaku, which led to a fight between them. The battle grew fiercer before Zen finally arrived to break them up. At the same time, the Nura clan's flying ship entered the Kyoto area. It is intercepted by a group of Kyoto Sky Guards yokai led by a yokai named Hakuzozu, who then challenges Rikuo to a one-on-one -on -one duel. He accepted the challenge and managed to defeat Hakuzozu with his new technique. The defeated Hakuzozu asks for death, but Rikuo spares and asks him to join his side. In the meantime, although their leader was defeated, the yokai army begins to attack the Nura clan's flying ship as it nears the dark outskirts of Kyoto. Rikuo and his clan are trying to survive the attack and finally land their damaged ship on a river in downtown Kyoto. After that, Hakuzozu said that he refused to join them. However, he advises Rikuo to go to the Fushime Inari Shrine, the location of the Eighth Seal. Meanwhile, Yura and the Onmyoji gathered at the Keikain family's main house to discuss the next steps. As a legendary Onmyoji during his lifetime, Hidemoto, 
now a Shikigami, reveals his plan to defeat Hagoro Mokitsune and her yokai comrades. He suggested that they let the fox yokai occupy Nijo Palace because she would give birth to her child in the palace. Although Hidemoto doesn't know exactly what kind of creature will be born by Hagoro Mokitsune, he is sure that this creature will bring disaster to all mankind. He said they had a chance to defeat her after she entered the Nijo Palace and awaited the birth of her child. He informs them they need two things to defeat Hagoro Mokitsune, Hagun's Shikigami technique and Nenakiramaru's spirit sword that can kill yokai. Hidemoto also ordered the Omioji to protect Yura because currently, she is the only Omioji who can use Hagun's Shikigami technique. Ryuji then told him and the others that Nenakiramaru's sword was currently in the hands of Nurari Hyon's grandson. Upon hearing that, Tsurara bursts into the meeting to inform them that Nura clan's aid is on its way. But before Tsurara revealed her true identity as a yokai from the Nura clan, Yura rushed to invite her to leave the meeting, along with Hidemoto. Tsurara said that currently, Rikuo was training somewhere to increase his strength before facing Hagoromo Kitsune. Hidemoto, who heard this, seemed a little relieved and revealed to Yura and Tsurara that the one who defeated Hagoromo Kitsune 400 years ago was Narari Hyon, who wielded Nenikiramaru's sword now. Tsurara asserts that Rikuo is a yokai who will not allow any yokai to harm humans because he is also a human. However, his human blood is often underestimated and considered a weakness. He fights for his principle to always protect humans from the threats of the yokai. On the other hand, unbeknownst to Yura and the others, Ryuji was eavesdropping on their conversation from behind the door. At the same time, Rikuo and his comrades finally arrived at the Fushimi Inari shrine with many gates called Tori. Even though they came during the day, Rikuo didn't change to his human form because of the dark aura that enveloped Kyoto since Hagoromo Kitsune's invasion and her night parade of demons. In fact, Kyoto is now filled with black spirit pillars that can spread hatred, which is the main strength of Kyoto yokai. Not only did Rikuo remain in his yokai form, but Awashima also did not return to his male form and remained a female yokai. While Rikuo and his comrades were discussing, Awashima approached an altar called Omoi Karuishi and lifted a boulder. No one knew about his actions except for Kurotabo. After Awashima put the stone in its place and joined his team, Kurotabo approached the altar and seemed to know something about Omoi Karuishi. On the way, Amezo told Awashima about the curse on Omoi Karuishi, in which calamity would befall a person if the Omoi Karuishi stone lifted by that person was heavier than expected. Not long after, Awashima saw a boy crying alone on one of the branches. Surprisingly, only he could see the boy. After that, he intends to help the boy. However, because of that, he is separated from Rikuo and the others. He then must confront Mukade, the yokai who inhabits the area, and he becomes desperate because the yokai turned out to be so formidable. Amid his despair, Kurotabo emerges from one of the tori and helps Awashima free himself from Mukade's restraints. Kurotabo tells him that Mukade will only get stronger if he feels scared and down. Therefore, Awashima must overcome his fear to be free from the illusory world created by Mukade to trap his victims. After a fierce battle, he finally managed to defeat Mukade and was reunited with Rikuo and the others. Shortly afterward, Hidemoto arrived at Fushimi Inari with Ryuji and Mamiru, who then dropped Mukade, who was still alive and was about to attack them. After that, Ryuji then sealed Mukade and made it a seal to replace the protective seal that had been destroyed by Hagoromo Kitsune and his henchmen. When the seal was in place, one of Kyoto's spirit pillars finally disappeared, and the sky brightened. After Hidemoto introduced himself, Rikuo was reminded of his grandfather's message before going to Kyoto, where Narari Hyun asked him to make Hidemoto his ally to defeat Hagoromo Kitsune. Hidemoto is a legendary Omioji who has created a spiral seal, the strongest seal made by connecting certain paths to protect Kyoto from the yokai. To destroy it, the yokai must destroy the seal one by one. Hidemoto explained that in each of these seals, he also sealed the strongest yokai and made them into his own seal, just like what Ryuji had just done. He plans to rebuild the seals that have been destroyed and asks Rikuo and his comrades to help the Omioji repair the seals because then they can stop the flow of spirit energy needed by Hagoromo Kitsune to give birth to her child. He also told Rikuo how to defeat her as he did with Narari Hon 400 years ago. In the middle of their conversation, suddenly, one of the strongest giant yokai, Tsuchigumo, appeared and immediately destroyed the place. Rikuo and the others managed to survive his sudden attack, then rose to fight against the giant yokai. On the other hand, Hidemoto warned Yura and the Omioji not to fight Tsuchigumo and told them to avoid the giant yokai as far as possible because they wouldn't be able to defeat him. One thing is for sure, Tsuchigumo is not an ally of Hagoromo Kitsune because he only seeks a good fight and a strong opponent, regardless of race, size, or gender. Finding a worthy adversary drives him into a frenzy, and those who can best him in battle, or even significantly wound him, 
would earn his respect. Rikuo tries to fight Tsuchigumo using a new technique he has mastered, but that attack didn't work against the giant yokai, who had enormous physical strength and could even easily knock him down without effort. Yura then asked Hidemoto how to defeat Tsuchigumo because Hidemoto had sealed him. However, Hidemoto reveals that he has never defeated the giant yokai. 400 years ago, after the defeat of Hagoromo Kitsune, all the yokai had left Kyoto, except for Tsuchigumo, who had been raging in the city for more than a month. When Tsuchigumo was exhausted, Hidemoto tricked him by making the giant yokai sleep long and sealed him. On the other hand, Rikuo's comrades didn't stay silent after seeing their commander taken down like that. They immediately attacked simultaneously, but their attacks couldn't even scratch Tsuchigumo in the slightest, and instead, they were beaten to a pulp by the giant yokai. Rikuo and his night parade cannot defeat him, no matter how many times they try. However, Rikuo continues to fight, even though the morning has come and he is in his human form. Impressed by their tenacity, Tsuchigumo retreats to Sokokuji Temple, taking Surara as a hostage to ensure that Rikuo and his night parade will come after him to save her. At the same time, Hagoromo Kitsune and her comrades finally destroyed the first seal and occupied Nijo Palace as they had planned. After that, she headed to the pond under the palace and planned to give birth to her child in the pond. She then ordered Ibaraki Doji and Shokera to collect the human hearts, which she later used as food to increase her strength, and also Nui, her child who would soon be born. The scene then switches and shows flashes of Rikuo's memory on the day of his father's death, who tried to protect him from the attack of a mysterious girl who wanted to kill him. The flash of memory then changes and shows Rikuo realizing that he can't beat Tsuchigumo in battle. Rikuo then woke up and found himself somewhere with Giyuki, who suddenly attacked him with the fear while explaining the importance of being stronger than Narari On and himself to defeat his enemies and become the commander of the night parade. In Kyoto, Hidemoto tries to convince Rikuo's yokai comrades to carry out their plan to build the seal because Hagoromo Kitsune has destroyed the first seal and occupied Nijo Palace to give birth to Nue. But most of the yokai had not fully recovered after receiving the attack from Tsuchigumo. So Kejoro tried to raise the fighting spirit of the yokai to help the Omioji and asked Kubinashi to lead them. Suddenly, Kejoro realized that Kubinashi had disappeared somewhere. Kubinashi, disappointed after their crushing defeat in the fight against Tsuchigumo, seemed to wander the streets of Kyoto aimlessly. On the way, he ran into yokai, who were about to attack humans. Since he was in a bad mood and his mind was also in turmoil, he returned to his old murderous ways and slaughtered the yokai. Kejoro, who managed to catch up to him, seemed surprised to see the drastic change in Kubinashi, who returned to his old self, a cold-blooded sadistic killer. He asks Kubinashi to come back with him, but Kubinashi becomes determined to single-handedly take down the Kyoto yokai and, ultimately, Hagoromo Kitsune herself. Meanwhile, Rikuo is being trained by Giyuki in the Great Tengu of Mount Kirama to increase the power of his fear so that Rikuo can lead his night parade. Iyuki explained that being the commander of the Night Parade of Demons is not just to lead them in battle because the strength of the Night Parade is directly proportional to the strength of their commander. In other words, the stronger the commander, the stronger the Night Parade. Furthermore, if the commander can make a strong bond by gaining the trust of his comrades, then his strength will become even greater. Since Hagoromo Kitsune will become stronger each time she is reincarnated, Rikuo must also have the strength to surpass his grandfather and father to defeat her. Iyuki asks Rikuo to stop thinking that his human side is a weakness and tells him that the peak of the Nura clan's glory was when his father, who was a half-yokai and half-human, became the commander of the Nura clan. At that time, Nura Rihan could accept his human and yokai sides, which made him so strong and respected by his opponents. Kubinashi, filled with the desire to kill, then went to the location of some of the seals that had been destroyed and slaughtered the Kyoto yokai who were guarding the place until finally arriving at Ryuinji Temple where he massacred the yokai who kidnapped school students. Kejoro, who saw that, remembered Kubinashi in the past, who did not hesitate to kill, even though he had no reason to do so. At the same time, Ibaraki Doji arrived and was very upset to learn that all his men had been massacred by Kubinashi. Elsewhere, Shokeira and his yokai comrades broke through the barrier around the Keikain family's main house and prepared to launch an attack on them. Seeing this, the head of the Keikain family did not let that happen and ordered the Omioji to rebuild the barrier to defend their residence. However, the Omioji were no match for Shokeira, who could easily tear down their defenses and destroy the place. In fact, Shokeira also managed to injure the head of the Keikain family very fatally. Seeing that their leader had been defeated, Akifusa, who had just recovered from his injuries, was determined to use his forbidden technique against Shokeira, even when he realized his chances of winning were slim. When Akifusa got into a fierce battle against Shokeira, and the yokai tried to break into the main house, Aotabo, who was in charge of protecting Kana and the others, 
then put them to sleep and joined the battle against the Kyoto Yokai with the Omioji. At the same time, Kubinashi and Kejuro engage in a fierce battle against Ibaraki Doji and his Yokai comrades. The collaboration between the two made Kubinashi remember the past when he first met Nura Rihan and decided to join the Nura clan and be part of his night parade. In the middle of the fight, they were surprised by the appearance of Kidomaru, who arrived at the place to check the situation because Ibaraki Doji had not yet deposited the human hearts requested by Hagoromo Kitsune. Kubinashi and Kejuro became increasingly pressured by Kidomaru's presence, especially after he managed to take down Kejuro by stabbing the female yokai. When Ibaraki Doji was about to kill Kubinashi, a seal fell from the sky and stuck right in the middle of the shrine grounds. Ura and Hidemoto then showed themselves in front of the Kyoto yokai while telling them that the seal could only be broken by Hagoromo Kitsune. The Omioji, assisted by Rikuo's yokai comrades, reassembled the three seals that had been destroyed to reduce the flow of spirit energy to her. Hearing this, Kitomaru became furious and prepared to attack Yura, who tried to fight the Kyoto yokai using his flagship technique. However, she immediately became desperate because he was not a weak opponent. But then, Ryuji and Mamiru arrived there and instantly saved her. At the same time, Kappa appeared and opened a portal to a safer place and took Kubinashi and Kejuro away from the battle because they had been seriously injured. Seeing this, Ryuji immediately threw Yura to go with Kappa to protect her from Kitomaru, who was after her heart to present to Hagoromo Kitsune. Meanwhile, Kurotabo and Ryuji and Mamiru chose to flee Kitomaru and Ibaraki Doji as their focus right now was to reassemble the seal that had been broken. At Mount Kurama, Rikuo, who had to undergo combat training with Giyuki and the Great Tengu, suffered a crushing defeat and was badly injured. Zen, who accompanied Rikuo, then treated him and seemed impressed by his physical toughness, who was still able to get up and fight against Giyuki and the Great Tengu, despite being beaten badly by Tsuchigumo. In the middle of their conversation, Zen showed his beautiful but poisonous wings and said that those wings were his fear. He says he wants to spread his wings and become a strength for Rikuo in every battle they face. Hearing that, Rikuo became excited again, determined to become stronger to protect his comrades. When the sun rose, he rushed to meet Giyuki. They immediately started training because Rikuo didn't have much time to defeat Hagoromo Kitsune, who was about to give birth to Nue. In the evening, after training, Rikuo, who was having dinner with Zen, Gozumaru, and Mezumaru, was then surprised by an attack from Kurama Tengu who were subordinates of the Great Tengu of Mount Kurama. Zen assumed that their attacks were part of the training Giyuki had prepared, but Kurama Tengu seemed very serious about killing them all there, especially after Kurama Tengu did not hesitate to hurt Gozumaru, who was Giyuki's subordinate. Rikuo then asked them to flee immediately while he would withstand the attacks. However, Zen refuses to leave and insists on staying by his side to help him in the battle. Unexpectedly, Rikuo could activate a new technique by combining his and Zen's fears and managed to fend off the attacks from Kurama Tengu, even knocking them all out. The Great Tengu of Mount Kurama witnessed his most powerful men being defeated so easily, then wondered about the training Giyuki taught Rikuo. At first, the Great Tengu was willing to help Giyuki train Rikuo to defeat Hagoromo Kitsune. However, due to the imminent birth of Nue, he finally decided to send his men to snatch Nenikiramaru's sword from Rikuo's hands. Iyuki then tells Rikuo that the technique is a technique that he must master to become the commander of the night parade, because the real power of being a leader is not about protecting or being protected by someone, but about trusting someone and gaining the trust of that person. And by doing so, they will voluntarily lend the power they have, which in turn can increase the power of the commander of the night parade. Elsewhere, Yura, who had just arrived at the main house of the Keikoyin family, looked very surprised to learn that the yokai had attacked the house and seriously injured her grandfather. At the end of his life, he conveyed his last message to Yura, asking her to become stronger because he would become the head of the Keikoyin family and protect Kyoto in the future. Yura was so shocked and devastated by her grandfather's death that she fell asleep. Hidemoto then asked Akifusa to take care of everything and treat all the injured, including the yokai from the Nura clan, because they had helped in the fight against Hagoromo Kitsune's yokai comrades. On the other hand, Aotabo, who knew they had been beaten badly by Tsuchigumo, looked very angry and intended to take revenge. Seeing this, Kubinashi stopped him and advised him not to act rashly because they would not be able to defeat Tsuchigumo or Hagoromo Kitsune without proper preparation. Moreover, Rikuo was also not with them. In the despair Rikuo's yokai comrades experienced, they finally got a glimmer of hope when he came with Zen. They seemed confident after undergoing a brief training with Giyuki at Mount Kurama. Knowing their commander had returned, the fighting spirit within them rekindled and was determined to help Rikuo face all his opponents on the battlefield. 
Meanwhile, Minagoro Shijizo received a report from his yokai comrades that the Kyoto yokai had been defeated in several places by a very powerful yokai army. Jizo immediately found out that the attack was carried out by the Nura clan, who were trying to thwart Hagoromo Kitsune, who was about to give birth to her child. After successfully defeating the Kyoto yokai and helping the Onmyoji to put the protective seal back in place, Rikuo rushed to where Tsuchigumo was to save Tsurara. Rikuo and his night parade arrived at the shrine just before Tsurara was about to stab her in the neck because she was feeling disappointed in her weak self, who couldn't protect Rikuo. However, he told Tsurara she no longer needed to protect him and asked her to lend her power and entrust it to him. At first, Tsurara didn't understand what Rikuo wanted, but after he mentioned borrowing her fear, she finally understood and, without hesitation, lent her fear to him to fight Tsuchigumo. The technique is called Matoi and is used by Rikuo's father, who has both yokai and human blood. Matoi is a technique for wearing the fear of others, and it can only be used with people who Rikuo trusts and trusts him. In other words, combining their power can increase his power. Using Tsuchigumo's fear, Rikuo could finally slash one of Tsuchigumo's arms, whereas before, he could not scratch the giant yokai's skin. However, even though his arm was cut off and unable to grow again, Tsuchigumo was actually overjoyed to have finally found a match for him after waiting hundreds of years. He was so happy and became too excited to destroy the place to build his own battle arena and face Rikuo in earnest. Tsuchigumo intends to separate Rikuo from his comrades, but Rikuo had performed the Matoi technique with his comrades, so they would always be by his side. The same goes for Zen and Tsurara. Not long after, Idaku, Awashima, and Amezo appear behind Rikuo and say that they are willing to lend their fear to Rikuo to defeat Tsuchigumo, even though they are not part of his night parade. After convincing Idaku, Rikuo finally managed to perform the Matoi technique with Idaku and used his fear to sharpen his attack. Together, they were finally able to split Tsuchigumo's body and make the giant yokai kneel before him. Having been defeated, Tsuchigumo decides to gather his strength again to fight against the Nui, who will soon be born into the world. Even so, Rikuo did not give up and tried to defeat Hagoromo Kitsune. On the other hand, as the battle between her and Rikuo grew fiercer, fragments of memories of Nura Rion kept popping up in her mind and made her somewhat lose her focus in the fight. Yura then took the opportunity to attack Hagoromo Kitsune, assisted by Ryuji and Mamiru. At the same time, the Nui finally rose, and its shell started to crack. As the crack fragments began to fall, Hagoromo Kitsune seemed so happy that her beloved son would finally rise, and they would reunite like a thousand years ago. Hagoromo Kitsune then said that the fragments were memories of her, who had reincarnated many times over the past thousand years to bring Nui into this world. However, they all suddenly became stunned when they saw one of the fragments of her memory that showed the past of Rikuo and Nura Rihan's death several years ago. After seeing the fragments of the memory of Nura Rihan, Hagoromo Kitsune suddenly felt an intense pain in her head, as if the memory had made a very deep impression and was also very painful for her. Realizing that she was caught off guard, Yura didn't waste the opportunity to use Hagun's Shikigami technique and launch a full attack on her. At the same time, Rikuo grabbed Ninikiramaru's sword and stabbed her to avenge his father's death. On the other hand, Hagoromo Kitsune, who saw the fragments of memories about Nura Rihan, suddenly remembered everything and called him daddy. After that, the human body possessed by her lost consciousness, along with her, who finally came out of the body. Hagoromo Kitsune looked very angry because she didn't think that she had been defeated, even though, according to her, the human body she used this time was perfect. With a series of memories about Nura Rihan and the human girl being the vessel for her resurrection this time, she finally realized that Seimei was the mastermind behind all this, and Jizo was his henchman. At the crucial moment, Nui was finally reborn in a different form from his previous life as Abe no Seimei. Nui admits that he was the one who sent the girl from hell to become a vessel for his mother, who would give birth to him again in this world. Seeing her truly reborn son, even in a perfect form, Hagoromo Kitsune didn't mind and hugged her son longingly. However, after reincarnating many times and struggling to bring her son back to this world, Hagoromo Kitsune did not get what she wanted in the end, as Nui instead threw his mother into the hell beneath them. Knowing that he had awakened, Tsuchigumo rushed over and challenged him to a fight. Turned out that Nui could defeat Tsuchigumo effortlessly and throws him into hell. Jizo, who was very happy to welcome the rebirth of his master, then presented the Demon King's hammer sword to Nui, as he had promised. With the spiritual sword, Nui could destroy parts of Kyoto with just one slash, and planned to destroy the entire city, then rebuild it as he wished. Jizo then reveals himself to be part of Sanmoto Gorozaemon, the leader of the Yakumonogatari clan, which was decimated by Rikuo's father and the Nura clan during the Edo era. 
Knowing that Nui's existence would threaten the safety of mankind, Rikuo did not remain silent and attacked him with Nenakiramaru's sword. Unexpectedly, Nui could easily break the spiritual sword with just one finger. When Nui was about to kill Rikuo, the human girl suddenly appeared in front of them and sacrificed herself to protect Rikuo. After that, Narari Hyon arrived there and rushed to save them. Narari Hyon then asked Giyuki and the other higher-ups of the Nura clan to buy time by fighting Nui while he would confirm the identity of the human girl. Rikuo assumed she was his older sister because he called his father daddy. But it turns out that the girl is Yamabuki Otome, a female yokai who was Rihan's first wife during the Edo period. As a result of Hagoromo Kitsune's curse on Narari Hyon, Yamabuki and Rihan were unable to have children throughout their 50-year-long marriage. With the Nura clan's board members whispering about her inability to be pregnant, Yamabuki disappeared, leaving behind a note for Rihan which contained a famous Japanese poem lamenting her inability to bear any children for him. She is presumed to have died at some point afterward. Eight years ago, Abe no Seimei and Sanmoto Gorazayamon used her in a plan to take revenge on Rihan. Yamabuki was revived in the form of a child to become Hagoromo Kitsune's host, her memories falsified. She was then sent to Rihan with a subliminal order to kill him upon hearing the poem she had once left him. When he recited it, she stabbed him through the chest with the Demon King's hammer and regained her memories. Despairing over having killed the man she loved, she pulled inward, then Hagoromo Kitsune was able to take full control of her body. Back to the present time, Yamabuki recounts what happened eight years prior and then asks to get a better look at Rikuo. She comments that if she had been able to give Rihan a child, she imagines it would be just like Rikuo and then falls unconscious. After learning all the truth about his father's death, Rikuo becomes even more determined to defeat Nue, who looks down on him for having human blood. But then, Nurari Hyon emphasized that the human blood that flows in his son and his grandson is not a weakness but a privilege that he is most proud of from them. Rikuo, together with the Nura clan and the Tono Yokai, attack Nue but cannot harm him with their haphazard attacks. Afterward, Rikuo gathers the combined fear of his night parade of a hundred demons by using the Matoi technique and attacks Nue. To Nui's surprise, his body starts to fall apart. Realizing that his body still needs to adjust to the human world, he retreats to hell, taking his followers with him but promising to return to finish the fight. Joy fills Rikuo and the allies at their unexpected victory. He then tells his grandfather to make him the third commander of the Nura clan and states that he is willing to undergo any training to become stronger. While Hidemoto and Narari Hone discuss the issue and estimate that they have about a year before Nui returns, Rikuo asks Akifusa to make a sword stronger than Nenakiramaru. Resting at home, Rikuo dreams of his father and grandfather having fun together. When he wakes up, his mother says he must have had a good dream because he smiled happily while sleeping. Rikuo then joins the council, where Narari Hyon informs everyone that there will be an all-out war against the Nui clan and its retainers. In the end, Rikuo informs his subordinates that the night parade of a hundred demons he leads will follow a code of honor and not hurt humans. The anime ends. The moral lesson of this anime is, it's a blessing for us to have friends we can trust, who know the best and worst of us, and who love us despite all our faults. To get someone's trust, you must be trustworthy. Being trustworthy is one of the hallmarks of being a good friend and a good person.